Hi, Eva Nichols here. Today I'm showing how to paint a leprechaun girl in watercolor. It's quite detailed, so if that's not your cup of tea, uh, use the fast forward button. Have fun! So, the colors we're going to use today for our little um, uh, leprechaun lady is we're going to use Antwerp blue, if you have it, or something similar. Antwerp blue is this blue here. So it's the one that is a little on the turquoise side. It leans a little bit towards green. And with blue, that's gonna give us a brighter green. And then we are gonna use some of our transparent yellow. We're gonna use some of our burnt sienna. And then we're gonna use a little bit of our cobalt blue and quinacridone red. Those are the colors we're gonna be using. Now the main colors here are going to be the transparent yellow. So I'm going to get a couple of puddles of that out there. That's that nice bright, bright yellow. And I'm going to have a backup over here because I know the yellow always gets dirty quickly. Confused as to how much paint to put in that little well. Really in this little well? No, the other one. Oh, this one? Like paint versus water. When oh, the yeah. oh, water question. Yes, the water question. <laughs> the water so question. it all depends. It all depends. There's not like one answer to that because it depends on how light or how dark or concentrated you want the color. Now, um, you want to have it so that the paint will go on your paper in a transparent manner. Of course, this is watercolor, so we do not, we do not paint with that full strength pigment. That's like acrylic you do that with, uh, not with watercolor. You wanna have it so that the white of the paper can still glow through, it's like a stained glass, glow through the pigment. That's what gives watercolor so that beautiful glow. That's that transparency. And that's also where you can glaze one layer over the other and uh, gradually intensify the color or change the color if you glaze over with another color. The first color, like if I glaze with yellow first, and where do I have a little piece of paper? I could do that. Oh, here, see here, for instance, I already have color on here. And then um, if I wanted to change some of that color, I could glaze over with some yellow. So I'm gonna do it down from down here. So you still see this, the color that was originally there is still shining through, right? Mm -hmm. But you're changing the color because I'm glazing over with another color, so I'm changing the color. After the original one is dry? It has to be dry, otherwise it's gonna lift and you're gonna get runbacks. But can you see how I changed that? Mm -hmm. But you can still see the color underneath. Mm -hmm. That nice grada gradation I had underneath, the nice flow from one color to the other is still there. It's just changed. And I could also, if, if I didn't want to change the color, say I just wanted to intensify it. I'm gonna go with another brush because that yellow is so staining and it's hard to rinse it out. Um, so this, I know I used uh, cobalt blue and that's one of the colors we're gonna be using. So I might as well get a puddle out here. So let me show you how you can intensify the color a little bit more water and again you don't do it with like full strength you can see I put quite a bit of water and this is one of the things you know I always always I would never ever go straight from the color well to my paper never because you have no idea what you have on your brush then and it's not going to be diluted um, in or, or dissolved in an even manner so you always go out here even if you're not mixing it with anything else, you go out here for two reasons. First of all, you want to dissolve the pigment in the water so you get a fluid paint, point one. And then I do a lot of mushing around and part of it is of course to dissolve the pigment, but part of it is also because I, I, that gives me a feel of how much pigment to water I have. So if I want it pretty diluted and pretty light and trans very transparent, I put more water in. That's gonna, see here, can you see that? 
Now it's much more transparent and diluted. And typically for when you're glazing, this is called glazing. When you're glazing over, you don't want it too thick because you, you want to see that first layer that you put on. So let's glaze here, I need more water. Let's glaze over here. And then I'm gonna want a little bit more water. Cause now maybe I want it to just disappear into nothing. So now I'm just rinsing out the blue of my brush and continuing just with a clean brush. So it kind of, you see now it goes into basically um, nothing. So I continue and then here. See how I have it gradual, that's a, a gradient. So I started out with more pigment here and I'm building up, but it's, you can still see the color underneath because where I hit the pink, you can see it looks more purpley now because the pink is still shining through, but then it's you know shining through that little uh, uh, transparent layer of blue I put there. So that's a very, very, very um, common and very useful technique in watercolor. And you can almost imagine here, I mean, for instance, for floors and things like that, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful technique. So you can build up those petals on a, on a flower, for, for instance. So it's a very good question. And I yeah. asked last week, but tell me again, so you take it from here and you put it in here. Yes. And then that's just for your backup? Well, I that. just do two, I do two puddles because, you know, I know that yellow gets, you know, it's going to get dirty very quickly because I'm going to make green, right? So then I start mixing here with, a, I have blue on my brush and then this is going to be green. Then I don't have yellow anymore. So I already have an extra one okay. here. So that's why, that's, I, I'm just putting two puddles of yellow in the beginning. I could just do one and then when it was dirty, I could stop everything and then put some yellow out somewhere else but I already know I'm gonna make it dirty, so I do too. And I never, ever, 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 ever would go like here and then onto my paper. Never would I do that. I think that's what I did on my elephant grass. Never would I do that. Uh, and another thing I would never, really never, ever, ever, ever do is I would never have a dirty brush and then go in like yellow on my brush and then go into my blue. Your brush has to be clean when you go into these here. Otherwise, you're gonna have the same color in all 12 wells within 20 minutes. And that color is going to be mud. So you want, this is important. You wanna keep these wells clean. Now, of course, sometimes it happens that they get dirty. And that's why I like to have them, see, it's a big problem if I get it dirty where I have like, I just refilled my yellow, so it's still very mushy. So if I made that one dirty by forgetting to rinse out my brush and for instance, get some of that Antwerp blue in there, well that I could pretty much dump the whole thing, which would kill me because you know, a tube of <laughs> paint yeah. is about 10 bucks, right? Yeah. Um, at least, yeah. and. That's why I like to have them in and then have them dry out on me because should I, or sometimes it happens, you know, my palette is still wet when I put it out in my car. And then, you know, I take a corner a little fast and boo, there goes my back on the side and my, this one, and then something will run in. But if they're dry like this underneath, even if there's a little bit of water, all I need to do is just, uh, like here, can you see I've got a little bit of blue in there? All I need to do is just spritz on a little bit of water and then I can take my um, Kleenex and then just kind of mop it out. Boom, clean. It's on here and it's not on there because it was dry underneath. It, you know, it is gonna happen to you sooner or later and there are, times where I am in a rush and I know that my, I won't do it if, if I have like a, a well that is just refilled and it's, but I have been known to have a little bit of cobalt blue or French <laughs> ultramarine and then go in and say, you didn't see that. <laughs> uh, because I know I can easily clean it up. But if I had just refilled there, I wouldn't do it because that, will cost me a lot of paint. Yeah. 
happened to me last week when I went home. It was still wet from the wells. Yeah. When I opened it, everything was streaming. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. so it took me a while to clean it. Yeah. And you have to, after you've done that a few times, you remember. <laughs> and you don't do it again. So, so that's why I'm pretty neat because, you know, it has happened to me too. All right, so let's get uh, on with the colors we needed here. So we already have our yellow. Now we got our cobalt. And I only need one of those, I think. And then we need our burnt shenna. That's this one here. And you know, burnt shenna, that's the color that you can totally mix yourself by mixing um, red and yellow together, get an orange, and then um, introduce um, either cobalt blue or French ultramarine blue, and you would be able to get you know, a, friend, a, a burnt sienna, but it just takes a while. So it's a convenience color. It's nice to have on the palette because I use it so often to uh, tone down colors and change the blues to grays or change uh, the burnt sienna, which is an orangey brown to a, a, a darker brown or more middle brown with some blue in it. So it's a very, very, very practical color to have. And so I'm gonna get nice amount of that and that one I might actually also do two at the same time because I'm going to use it for two different things I already know that I'm going to use it for a shadow color for white so I'm going to create a very light gray bluish gray with it and then I'm going to create a reddish brown for her hair so that, and those two are kind of like, you know, going in two different directions. So it's better if I have two, uh, two puddles for that. Uh, and then I need red. I don't need very much red because it's just for her hair. And a little bit, and we're also gonna, so I'm, today you're also gonna learn how to create a skin color because we do see her big old nose and a little bit of her cheeks. So we're gonna do that. So that was my quinacridone red, which is my true red. It, slightly on the pink side, but it's the truest red I have. It's not a pink pink. Um, and then finally, and I, I do that one last because it's the one that's the most staining and difficult to control. That's my Antwerp blue. So nice big puddle of that. And I think since that's my main color, for my greens. Main color for my greens. And the, I'm going to put some more down here just so I have for what I need. All right. So finally, we got all our puddles together. And I'm going to take some of my Antwerp blue. And then, see, this was. You'll see now, this is why, you know, I wanted to have a backup yellow because you can see already, you know, that's not gonna be yellow anymore. And can you see how these two, they just love each other. Mm -hmm. They create these wonderful, wonderful greens. So here I have more yellow, there I have less yellow, so I have a lighter green. And that's a real, isn't that that beautiful kind of really Kelly green? Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. And that's, you know, I could have used, uh, my uh, my uh, cobalt, or I could have used my French ultramarine oops, um, blue to create my green, but um, then it would have been a more muted green because um, that blue is more of a purpley blue, as we know. You can see here, there's Antwerp, that's the one I'm using, and there is French ultramarine blue. Can you see a huge difference? Mm -hmm. And can you see this one looks more purpley compared mm -hmm. to this one? Mm -hmm. So this one already is leaning towards green. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit on the turquoisey side, and that means it it's just, I always say, they're dying to go green. You just whisper yellow to an Antwerp blue and it goes green. <laughs> All right. Um, are we going to do wet into wet, or are you going to uh, We are going to do, do wet into wet, mm -hmm. but not wet into wet like wetting the whole page. Yes. Okay. We're going to do it one section at a time. We're going to do it, um, you know, wherever we're putting paint on, that's where we're going to do that wet into wet, because, you know, that's my favorite way of painting, and that's the best way, and, you know, this 
I'm just getting all that extra graphite off, yeah. as usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm gonna try very hard not to overdo it so I can't see, and you can't see what, what we're painting. There we are, good enough. A little bit more there. All right, so we're gonna start with our hat. That's just, you know, arbitrary, but let's start with our hat. So I put clean water on a brush, dab it a little bit here, make sure I don't have those pesky little droplets on the handle. And now I'm just gonna put clean water on her hat here, above the buckle and the band. And I don't go all the way out to the edges. I leave a little bit of room. Can you see that? So it's if you just go, in this middle yeah, part. Just in the top of the hat, okay. above the band. You leave a little room so it flows. So that it doesn't flow past the lines and, and get all fussy, you know? <clears throat> all right, and I have my loaded brush here. So see, I just go in. Can you see how it stops? Mm -hmm. where there's no, where, where it hits dry, yes. and then it flows into that area where I put water on. Mm. So that's the control you have, and that's why it's important. Don't put water where you don't want the, the color to go, because it doesn't matter you say to the color, don't go there, <laughs> it's gonna go there. <laughs> if you put water, it's gonna go there. So we're not doing the backgrounds at all? We're, we're no, not, not all yeah. We're, either we're leaving it white or we're painting it in afterwards if we decide oh. it needs to be painted in. Okay. That we can decide. Last time we did it the opposite time uh, way, right? We painted in the background before we painted the elephant. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So there's many, you know, there's not one way. That's always how, how you do it always. It all depends. Um, so now I'm going up here a little bit more and I'm dabbing in while it's still wet. I'm dabbing in a little bit more pigment there and it flows out, right? So that's the time to do that. You and now. No idea. Oh, four or six. A number eight. It, a brush size is really pretty much irrelevant. Okay. It's what you do with a brush. <laughs> Are you uh, this? I am taping this. Yes. Um, and now I rinsed out most of the green and I'm pulling out that green that I have. I'm going to put a little bit more on. This is Antwerp blue and transparent yellow? Correct. Yes. And now I dip my brush in a little bit more of the yellow and the green just to get a little bit of a lighter color um and I'm just gonna fill out that hat like this there we have it and you want to get all this done before it dries on you if possible might even go in and do a little bit like that and now i better stop but can you see um where is the light coming from here the way i painted it's coming from the top and it's coming from this side, right? So keep that side a little bit lighter than that side. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, nothing new here. We did the exact same thing in the elephant. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do one more of the hat. And that is here, the bottom part of the hat around her nose and underneath that uh, nice band she has on her hat with a, a buckle. And I'm gonna get a little bit more pigment on my brush and again I'm starting from the shadow side let's go around her nose Boop. and out here and I want a little bit more pigment on so I went back got more pigment on my brush and again I'm trying to make it darker away from the light underneath this I'm sorry, buckle. Did you put water on there first? Mm -hmm. Yes I did put water on first, just, you know, a stroke of water in the middle, kind of, and I can see I didn't put as much as I maybe would have liked to, but now I've got to deal with that. Rinse it out almost, and then before it dries, connect these here without, I'm trying not to get any hard lines. That's my goal here. All right. So now can you see how it's like the hat is mm -hmm. catching a little bit of light on that side mm -hmm. and it gives us more dimension and that way we don't have to mess with it so much afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. 
and I, if you, I mean, don't, if it's starting to dry, just stay out. You can fix whatever. We can do another layer. We can glaze like I just showed you on top of it, which we are also to give it more depth, but get as much done as you can in the first go around, but don't overdo it. So you start, you know, uh, brushing in a dry area or almost or worse drying area. Um, so a darker green, burnt Jenna into your green that you have created from Antwerp and transparent yellow. And we'll do the same thing as always. We'll get a little bit of water inside and see here her little dress is split up in different areas. So we didn't, don't need to wet the whole thing. So I'm gonna start here with her left sleeve. And I put a little bit of water in. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just gonna put some of my color in here. Take some of the water out. And I want it darker. And then I'm carefully painting around her little braid and her ribbon, a little bow that she has in her braid. And then I'm just going down to that cuff that she has on her sleeve here. That cuff, I want to uh, have be some kind of a fur. So that'll be kind mm -hmm. of beigey brown color, is my idea. All right, so I got a lot of water in here, so I have to let it just uh, sink into the paper a little bit and then I'm going to go in and, and dab in a little bit more pigment because it's a little lighter than what I really want but at least it's on the light side so let's go over here and try not to put as much water in here I have a little bit of color so you can see where I put the water that's easier for you to see then can you see mm -hmm. I don't go all the way to the edges and now let's take some of all that water out and I'm going to take a little bit more of the Antwerp and then put it in here. Of course, now I'm on the shadow side and I definitely want to be darker here. And watercolor, you might have noticed, it dries lighter, have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. it dries lighter than what it looks right when you put it on. And it goes in like this around her little bow and like that. So if you like overstepped your bounds there and went in the color, like say oh, here, how do you yeah. get rid of that? Well, you have to dab it up right away. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this these two colors that I have in, in my green, the transparent yellow and the um, Antwerp blue, they're very staining. So, you know, I mean, even when you dab it up right away, it's not gonna be completely gone. So then you just have to uh, um, adjust it with whatever color you were then planning on putting on here. If I had then planned on having my bow white, I might have to change my mind. Right. Okay. Um, that's really all you can do. And now here, can you see it was still very, it's still very wet, it's still, very wet there, I can see the pigments. You can see it's very shiny still. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's still very shiny, I can actually go in and I can dab in a little bit more pigment and I wanna do a darker, even darker green. So I got a little bit of the Antwerp and not so much water right here. And I put a little bit of the uh, Shanna in there, have a really rich dark color. And while it's still very damp, I can just dab in. Can you see how it just, I just touch it mm -hmm. and it just spreads by itself. And a little bit here, I want it a little darker here, there. And then I can use gravity. Once in a while, gravity can do us a favor in painting only. <laughs> in painting only. In painting only. Just saying. Mm. Otherwise, I haven't noticed much favors from gravity. <laughs> but here, can you see how then I, I, I wanted to make it really dark there because I want the, uh, those braids to really pop. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave this wonderful paint in my brush and I'm just gonna go in with another brush and put a little bit of water in here in her dress that we can see underneath her little apron. And there's little pieces we can see here and here also. Alrighty, so I start on the shadow side of her. I think I ate a little bit of an apron, oh well. There's a little bit here. She's rather stout, her um, She is rather <laughs> stout. Her skirt is much wider than her shoulders. Yep. <laughs> But she also has petticoats underneath. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Petticoats underneath. <laughs> Isn't that what you, you call them? Yeah. Yeah. Remember? I, I remember petticoats. You know, when you wanted to have, when you have these full skirts and you wanted them to stand oh, out. Yeah. The, red ones, remember the, yeah. Red ones, right. <laughs> the, the more the merrier. That was my, that was my thought when I was like 10. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't get enough. I'm sure, you know, I don't even, you, unless you to, went to dance school or something like that, I don't even think my daughter was into that kind of stuff. So I'm just trying to get around her whole dress before it dries on me because again, I'm trying to avoid getting brush strokes in places where I don't want it. I, and I don't want it here. And now I'm dabbing in a few places because if I can get it to look um, a little bit like there's a little bit of a wave, mm -hmm. you know, uh, right. in her yeah. little dress there, mm -hmm. I would be a happy camper. Mm -hmm. And I have one little area here too that I need to get a little bit of that green in. So I think I can do it with this brush, but you know, you might want to grab a smaller brush if you want to get into you know those little areas mm -hmm. right around here yeah i have one more that needs to be tweaked a little bit around her thumb, so. yeah right around here and i think this is okay all right so i like it what about here what about here yes oh good i forgot about that so a little bit of her dress oh here i'm going to do it wet on dry because okay. you know she has her apron on but there's a little and then she has a scarf but right here, you can see her dress. So let's make that also dark. There's her dress peeking out underneath the scarf and the apron. There, there we go. So now she's kind of coming together. Can you see how it's kind of nice not have it all the same color? Mm -hmm. And then we can do her bows, you know, if you want to have them green, they could be a very light, like yellow green, like a real spring green. They could be pink. Absolutely, they can be pink. Okay, so let's paint her white apron. And what we're going to do there is we are going to create a color of the shadow of white. Because white, I mean, look at your white apron. Oh, yeah. Squint your eyes. Can you see all those shadows and stuff like that? That they're kind of gray, blue gray. Um, they can be, you know, pinkish. They can be purpley. It all depends. They, you know, white picks up, you know, like reflects what's surrounding it. But uh, most of the time, I use a little bit of cobalt. So I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt and let's have it watered down, way down. Can you see how light it is? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm just gonna grab here, I have a little droplet, I think it got on, of the uh, burnt sienna. And can you see how it already grayed it down? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit there. I don't want it too, too brown gray because then it's gonna look like it's dirty. Mm -hmm. So it's better to have it a little bit more on the blue side, maybe those. Here, that's about right. Still a cool, grayish color and it's just I mean I just have a couple of drops here because I really don't want it very dark because I still want her apron to look white so if I do it too dark it's gonna look um, not white anymore and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some clean water on a smaller brush this happens to be number four but it doesn't matter as long as it has a tip so you can get in here. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water 
underneath the waistband on her apron and I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to hold it up when I have the water on so you can hopefully see. Um, I'm going to pull down a little bit here, there. So I'm going to hold it up. Can you kind of see where I put the water on? And you don't have it. I'm not all the way, way down. down no. right. okay. So what I'm thinking is, can you kind of see? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and you'll see it when I put oh, the color yeah, on. Tip, tip oh, good. Um, so I'm going to put that, just dab in and I'm going to do it and then I can hold it up again because it's wet enough. Can you see I just dabbed in like that mm -hmm. so you can see how light it is. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go in carefully around her little bows. Around the waist, along the waist. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then a little bit around on the other side of the bow like that. Can hold it up again. Kind of like that. And now I'm going to rinse out my brush in a moment. I want to get a little bit on the other side of here. This is the shadow side, so I'm going to put a little bit on there. So I just got a little bit on that side also. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush, dab it so it's just damp. And now I'm just going to pull that down until it disappears into nothing. You know, because it goes in, she has a waistband tied, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes in, so it's going to be a little bit of shadow on, and then I just want it to just kind of dissipate into nothing. That way it, I get a little bit, and I'm, it doesn't matter if you paint over those uh, those shamrocks. Uh, shamrocks, because they're going to be a, a, a green, so that's going to, you know, be a lot darker than this little shadow color. So you so. didn't wet any more below? No, I, just down in a couple of stripes, just because I'd like to have, and I can do it here, I, I'd like to have just a little bit like that, like there's little folds in her apron, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a little bit of shadow, and if you get too much, rinse out your brush, and then, you know, pick up a little bit with a thirsty brush, that's what it's called, thirsty brush. And then I'm just going to make sure I don't get any lines where I don't want it. Yeah. But can you see how that still looks white? Mm -hmm. But it gives it a little bit of shape. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll let that dry, and then I'll do a little bit on the top. And then her waist, this the waistband itself, where you tie it, like here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be actually also a little bit darker. Because, you know, that goes in and then, you know, oh, okay. there's, yeah. there's shadow on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And so there's that. So it still looks white, but it doesn't look so flat. And it'll be better once, you know, we get all the other stuff on. Pardon me? It'll dry lighter. Yeah, it'll, it'll dry lighter. But, you know, once we get all the other colors on, and then this, it, it's, I, I can guarantee you it's going to look white. It's going to look white at the end. But if we leave it just plain, like white, this, it looks so flat. It look like a cutout that you put on. And we don't really want that. Now that I have that shadow color, I'm going to put shadow on a couple of other places. So her scarf here, I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow color. Now I'm just going to do it on dry. On the inside of that scarf here, I'm going to hold it up in a second. Like on the inside of the scarf, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to rinse out and then just with that damp brush, just kind of pull it out into nothing. So her scarf's white too then? It's white, but it's going to have green stripes on. Oh, okay. But I still want to have that shadow on, and I've got to put that on before I put the green on, because if I try to put the shadow over the green, the green's going to smear. Right. Yeah. So I, I want to give that a little shape. And so it's, it's white out here on that edge here. And then it has a tiny bit of shadow. It's barely, I mean, it's not even half a <laughs> shade or anything, but it's enough to give it a little bit more movement. Um, and I can put a little bit more on in here while it's still damp. It's barely anything, but it's it's gonna help give it more shape. And then her little study, studgy legs. Uh, we can also put a little bit of shadow on them so I'm going to put, and again, I'm going to do just wet on dry. 
and just pull it out. I don't want any hard lines. I don't want her leg to look like it's striped. And that's she's gonna get some striped socks on. But can you see, I put a hint mm -hmm. of that shadow color on that side of her leg, and then I pulled it out into nothing. It's kind of like when we, those of you that have painted birch trees with me or aspen trees with me before, um, we do that on the, on the white trunk before we put those dark markings on to make the trunk look round. Mm -hmm. And it's the same, her leg is round, it's not flat, right? And so we can do the same. And now I ran out of my shadow color, so I've gotta make a little bit more. So that's, again, the shadow color is lots of water and then it's cobalt blue with a hint and just a hint of burnt sienna in. And so I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on the back side of this leg because if the light's coming from here, I'm figuring that'll be where it would be. And I bit of rinse out that brush and get that color going into nothing. There. So there we have that and maybe a little bit more down here and a little bit more down here. And see how that just gives a little shape to her little studgy legs. Yeah. So that's wet on dry. Wet on dry. You can do wet it first, but it's just such a small area. I felt that I can get I can get to it before it dries on me. So are we going to do this top part here too? No. What? Not yet. Not yet. Not yeah, we can do that favorite. now. We can do it now. Because now it's dry, but it has to dry. It's dry. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do. Remember, I said the the uh, the little waistband here. That's going to be darker. So I'm going to paint that in on dry paper, because then it's not diluted. So it'll be a little bit darker. And then I can rinse out my brush, and then I can kind of pull up a little bit from there and give it a little shape. Just a little bit. I want the band to be the darkest. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I think that's good enough. Even that out. So there's that. And I'll do one more so that you don't have to run back and forth here all the time. Um, I'm gonna do her, her little uh, band on her hat and I'm just gonna take some of those pencil lines out. There we are. And I think it would be, look really nice if that band is uh, gold. And so, oh. like yellow. But I'm gonna take yellow and I'm gonna have to make myself a little space. Used up all my areas for mixing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the yellow. It's a clean yellow, transparent yellow. And um, rinse that out. And then I'm gonna take a, just a little bit of my quinacridone red on the tip of my brush, like that. I wanna warm that yellow up a little bit, so it's more like a warmer yellow. That was a little too much, but like that. I kinda like that. And that's completely, you know, uh, up to what you like. And before I put it on, I'm gonna put a little bit of water inside the band and inside here and inside here. So I put water on just the middle part of the band, just so that I have it, it gives me a little bit more time to paint, really. Uh, and then I'm just gonna dab this gold color on the shadow side and just pull it up to here. There's that. And it can be a little, can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then inside, this little buckle or whatever you call that, like that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow on the tip of the brush. And I go as far as about there. Now I'm gonna kind of rinse out my brush, put a little bit more of the just pure yellow, and then I'm gonna pull it out. Because, you know, light. 
and yeah the light it's the lighter side of the bed can you see that mm -hmm. so then you, it looks like the light's hitting it there mm -hmm. the more we can do it's amazing how little it takes like light dark i mean it's not a big difference and and it still makes it on especially like on these uh, little uh, shadows i mean it takes like next to nothing for it to uh, start giving it shape and making our brains think it looks rounded. Just different things you're saying. I look back at the elephants just mm. to see where the... Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was little shadow on there and then the little band and uh, we're moving along a little bit there. Band. Have fun. Band. Yeah. Apron, I forgot. Actually, I could have done it at the same time. I should put a little bit of shadow on her scarf. And I always make sure that my shadow color is not too brown because then I feel it looks dirty. And it's the same with, so this is exactly the color you would also put on snow, for instance, so, snow shadows. Um, so anyway, I am gonna do wet on, on dry. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that shadow color right here at this end of her scarf. And I better get a move on here because you know I don't want it to be a hard line like that. It has to be gradual then. Because the scarf is going in behind her little, uh, not her behind her little nose, but behind her little um, nose. Uh, braids, braids, oh. right here Sorry. at the edges. Um, and so again, I put a little bit of the shadow color on and it's a little bit of a darker shadow color. And then I'm pulling it out with a damp brush. Can you see how that makes her scarf look rounded? Mm -hmm. Um, so a little bit of shadow color on either side of her scarf and then pull it, pull the color into the middle until it kind of disappears into nothing. That makes it look a little bit rounder. And again, I'm going to make, see, in my world, she has a striped scarf, but it's still good to get a little bit of shadow on there. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was that. And now since I have a kind of a grayish color, I'm going to make a little bit more of a grayish color. So with my cobalt blue and a little bit of my burnt sienna, and now I don't mind, I don't want it that brown. I don't mind if it's a little bit grayer like that. Okay, mm -hmm. that's about a good color as far as I'm concerned. And then I'm gonna go in on her little cuffs here. Oops, way too much water. And put a little bit of water inside her cuffs on her sleeves and then uh, just dab in a little bit of that gray color. Oh. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush, dab, dab, and just pull that out to the edges around her little thing. And that way it kind of looks like fur, I find, as it kind of runs out like that. There, maybe a little bit darker in here, right there. And I'm just dabbing in a little bit more at the edges there. But can you see that? Mm -hmm. So she's got little fur cuffs. Mm -hmm. Done. Did you see? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And if if it got a little too solid colored, I'm gonna lift out a little bit maybe in the middle there. I've got a little too dark. There. But that you know they can be whatever color you like. But I think gray little furry thing mm -hmm. is fine with me. So that's that, and then let's um, let's give her her shoes and her buckle because they're going to be black. Oh. And then, or oh, I mean, black is brown, whatever you want. I am going to create a black uh, with using the rest of or mo some of my um, burnt sienna and cobalt blue will only go gray. It won't go that dark mm -hmm. so that it can be like so, a black. So I need to use French ultramarine blue instead. Oh. French ultramarine blue okay. or ultramarine blue, depending on what brand you have. Uh, in, in what? Burnt sienna. And I'm gonna use the puddle I have here. So you can see, I don't have very much water on because if I want black, I can't have a whole bunch of water because then it's gonna dry and look gray. Mm -hmm. So, can you see? 
-hmm. Black, blackish brown, all depends on how much uh, French ultramarine to, so now it's a dark brown. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Dark brown, yeah. which would be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want it black, I need to put a little bit more blue in it. And so I'm gonna, with another brush, I'm gonna take a little bit more blue. So then I have black over here. Whoa, it's black as, as it gets. And of course you can get black out of the tube, but I'm sure you can imagine not my cup of tea. <laughs> I can make my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like to mix my own colors. I think they're more lively that way. So let's just uh, start on there. You probably want to take a little bit of a smaller brush for the buckle here. So again, not too much water now. And now I'm doing wet on dry. And I'm just gonna go in and paint this little thing. So this is a little bit about, you know, brush control, do this. But, you know, it's hand forged, so it doesn't have to be like perfect. Perfection, I always like to say, is highly overrated, especially in watercolor. <laughs> And I, as you know, I always like to turn mine around, especially for something like this, where it's, you know, I try to get a straight line as I, as I can. And I'm not very good at straight lines anyway. Um, so that it's as easy as possible to do the brush strokes. And you know, this is a nice dark color, so this is an excellent time to, uh, correct little imperfections and you can straighten things out with that, cover things up. So here's that. And I'm gonna dab in a little bit more there. There's a little buckle, good enough. I think I wanna go a little bit further over here. And I, I can see I have a couple of white spots, but I don't wanna make the black so wide. So I'm gonna go in and fix that later, not now. And now her little shoes. They're not so little for such a <laughs> tiny girl, but. So again, here I might go in and have it in a little bit of the browner part of my blackish mix. And that's wet to dry? Wet on dry, okay. just because you know I want it to be a dark color and the more you dilute with water, the lighter it gets, right? Cause more of that white paper is gonna shine through then. So you did say wet on dry, right? Wet on dry, okay. yes. So I don't wet it first, because I want it <coughs> dark. And again, they're not like that big, and it's not that big of an area that it's gonna be very difficult to get around. And again, you know, I, I pre prefer not to have my brush strokes showing, so it's important that I get around the whole area before things dry on me, and those brush strokes start showing up. So I have my brush pretty loaded with pigment. And there I have it. That's a nice little shoe for her. Yeah. So like that. And then I'm probably going to use my smaller brush to go inside the little buckle there. And you can see a little bit of that dark leather of her shoe through the opening in that buckle, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. And then when it's all dry, I'm gonna paint the buckles that gold color mm -hmm. that we used for her band there. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't have to watch me paint the next shoe, but I will paint her gloves. Cause then you can paint her gloves and um, her shoes. You can put that shadow on her scarf. And so what I'm gonna do with her gloves, I am gonna get myself a little bit more of the burnt sienna somewhere. Who knows where? Here, just on the side there. Next to my black. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put a little bit more burnt sienna because I want her gloves to be kind of like a dark brown, darkest brown. 
but again, you know, you can do your gloves, whatever color you want. And I am gonna put a little bit of water inside. And there was, I think it was you mm -hmm. asked, you know, about my lines, how I get my lines fairly crisp. And that is because I do not go all the way out to the pencil line because the water creeps a little bit. So if I put the water all the way out there and then I come in with the pigment all the way there, it's gonna fuss out a little bit. So that's, that's the reason I stay away from the line so I have a little uh, room to correct, so to speak. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a little bit of that burnt sienna in that brown, the brownish black I created for the boots. And you can see because I have the water in, it flows out and it becomes a little bit, it's, it's not so dark. I don't want her gloves to be like super dark but I want them to be dark enough that they stand out from those little cuffs that I created. So now I'm going in with a little bit of a darker color on the inside. They're knitted gloves. So I like it if they, and send, so I'm also doing, can you see I'm not doing a super straight line here on purpose. I'm kind of going into that a cuff a little bit oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I want it to look like it's fur. So fur would not be a straight line. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that these colors, these browns are kind of fussing into each other mm -hmm. because I think that looks more like knit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I am trying to create, in other words, I'm trying to create a little bit of texture within the glove with these brown colors. So I also, you know, vary the color a little bit. And so I use a smaller brush for this, this number four brush. And by having the water inside, that assures me that the colors have something to kind of mix and mingle in. I'm kind of giving them a dance floor. If you think of them as dancing, I sometimes think they're dancing or they're, you know, mingling, they're at a party. All right, see, so then that's kind of a cute, little glove I think I like that and I like that I have a little bit of that can you see that burnt sienna there mm -hmm. of course the lights coming from there and that way it looks you know what did you do with her scarf or did you uh, I just shadow? put the shadow oh. on either oh, side yeah, because yeah. you know it's yeah. going in yeah mm -hmm. so the middle here is going to be the lightest and then it's kind of be darker so I put a little bit of shadow color on either side and then right away with a damp brush I kind of you know let it out into into nothing, so to speak. So it meets, but it's kind of, you know, it's faded away, so it's white here, right here. And then it's gray, and then lighter, 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 lightest, and then it kind of goes a little bit darker until it disappears in again. So there you have it, so you can finish, you know, the shoes, the little buckle, her, her mittens, and uh, the little uh, uh, cuffs. Want me to show it? Yeah. But see how nice, doesn't that look like knit? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. yes, it does. <laughs> it's really yeah. texture. So, yeah, and it's all, so I'm letting the water and the pigment do that for me. I, you know, I just put the water in the middle there, and then I add the colors, and then I let them kind of run into each other, and they, they uh, create that little okay, bit of texture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I want to get a little bit of color on her face. And I'm gonna show you how to create a skin color. So we take a little bit of burnt sienna. And it has to be quite watery, right? Um, because, you know, she's Caucasian, I think. I think leprechauns are Caucasian. At least the ones that this gal, she's Caucasian. I might take a hint of the red to warm it up. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more of the cobalt blue, put in. And then I'm gonna take an awful lot of water, something along those lines. I red, still- red, cobalt blue, and a lot of water. Yeah. And I might also put a little tiny, tiny bit. It's just kind of a little bit of back and forth with this. And it doesn't, yeah, here. I might take just a hint of the yellow there. 
a little bit more cobalt. Oh, there, I think that's a good skin color. So it's kind of like this, very, very, and when, when it's watered down, it's gonna look like skin color. And I'll probably put a little bit of water inside her face over her nose. We're gonna paint her nose and her face in one go, and then afterwards we're gonna separate it out. So I put a little bit of water inside her face slash nose. It's mainly nose in this uh, case. And then uh, let's just put a little bit of that skin color on and let's see. Yeah, that's totally fine. And see how it flows out and becomes, and it's gonna dry lighter, which is what we want. And so a little bit more of her skin color on the other side. And we're gonna have to let it dry before we can do anything else to it. And again, I'm gonna try and see if I can have it a little bit darker. Close to her, um, close to her braids because you know, her face is also not flat. It goes in like that, right? So, I'm gonna dab in a little bit more on those two sides. And can you see how, how her nose now sticks out a little bit? Mm -hmm. Just because it's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just tempted and I'm just gonna do it, what the heck. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of the quinacridone red, just a little bit of the quinacridone red and put it in here, just a little bit like that. And before those cheeks are dry, I'm gonna just give her a little, you know, she's outside and maybe she's had a little whiskey or something. Who knows? <laughs> Scotch, Scotch. Irish whiskey. And, yeah, Irish, Irish whiskey. whiskey. Uh, and I might lift out a little bit on her nose there. But for right now, this is good. And her nose is also gonna get a little red, but later. All right, so that's good enough for me. And I can just see that, you know, I, I had a couple of white sparkles right here on, on this. Got to take those away with just a little bit of that gold color. And so then that's fixed. And then I can't paint her braids right this second because her face is wet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gold on her buckles, her shoe buckles. So again, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of the quinacridone red in to just make it a little bit more reddish gold. And I'm just gonna paint those in wet on dry. Just like that. And the same on this one over here. And then they are painted. And then, while that's happening, see, so then he, she has a buckle sun. That's good enough. There's that. And then we are going to put her little stripes on her socks. So you wanna use probably a, a little bit of a skinnier brush. And I'm just gonna use one of the greens I have here. So this is probably a good green, kinda there. So I'm gonna load up my brush. And so this is a little bit of um, brush technique skills, whatever. So I'm just gonna give her those little stripes on her socks and what, skip what green. green. What, so I'm gonna hold it up. Like I'm gonna hold it up in a minute. No, okay, cute. so just like that. And I just used what that green I had in my palette. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, medium, medium green. And there's nothing to it, you know, I mean, it's just a little time consuming. I'm not gonna bore you with all the stripes on both socks. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna show you here. So that's how I'm gonna do that. It's dry. Yeah. Wet on dry, I don't wanna put any water in first or anything like that. And so I'm gonna, and they don't have to be perfect. They're home knit stockings. <laughs> so, and then down here. 
but it just, you know, once you have all those little stripey things on, it looks kind of cute. There. Mm -hmm. So they look a lot cuter that way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And then um, we're going to do the same on her little scarf here. That's also home knit. So, and so there, I'm going to um, do the stripes a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve as I go down. So these. So like that. And I'm gonna hold it up in just a second so you can see. And if I can get a little bit of a difference, it's like that. Can mm -hmm. you see that? Yeah. Because you know, it's like this. Yeah. And again, I mean, this is not a hyper-realistic painting. So, you know, don't get too... <laughs> So they're not straight. They, they'll have a little curve because, you know, the scarf is, you know, when you tie a scarf and you sling it over your neck, right? It's gonna be a little folded. So I'm just trying to give it a few little wiggles. Yeah, good enough. And a couple more stripes. This, this, little, so there we have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm picking all her notes. All right. And then um, her scarf has these little tassels on, so I'm going to put those on. And then, so the tassels, so I'll just put like three little, you know, dots. And then we're going to do a brush stroke that's, I'm going to show you how it goes. So you load up your brush and then you put it down and lift it up. So it's a flick of the oh, wrist for the, mm -hmm. for the tassels, right? Put the dots first for the dots. I put the dots first and then I'm going to try and see if I can do these little. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. There, that looks like tassels to no, me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a little flick of the wrist. All right, so I think her little face is trying to, and can you see how now that it dried? Mm -hmm. I like that. I think yeah. that's a good skin mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. Does she, does she get ears? I mean, uh, not ears, eyes. Yes, she does get eyes. She does get eyes. First, I'm gonna give her nose a little, um, it's gonna, it's gonna have a, have to have it. We have to have a little bit of a red nose on a girl like this. I think that's what I think. You can, yeah. Oh, whiskey. She just came out of the cold. She came out of the cold. This was a little too orangey, so I'm gonna put a little bit more red in. But it's dry. I'm doing it on dry. Yeah, right now I'm doing it on dry. And no, oh, just I'm just time. gonna do a little bit like this and then I cleaned out my brush and then I'm gonna go like this, mm -hmm. just like that. And then I think it's, her nose is gonna be a little bit darker, like underneath, or actually on her face. I put no, red no, in, no. Oh, okay. put red in to give her a red nose. And then I'm gonna just kinda her nose cats, uh, you know, it's a big nose, so it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. <laughs> yeah, just take that a little bit like that. All right, so I'm good enough with this. Maybe a little bit shadow on this side of the nose, too. A little bit like that. And again, you don't have to mess so much with this, but it's kind mm -hmm. of, I have fun with it. There. Yeah. It's not much, but it's there. And then her eyes, her little eyes, we can go back into our black. Wow. And I'm just gonna give her, let's make sure it's dry. So I'm just gonna give her a little bit of an eye and I'm gonna pull up because it's a girl 
gonna try and pull up with those kind of strokes again that are, you know, like I did the tassels mm -hmm. to kind of give her a little bit of a feeling of eyelashes. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's gotta have something pretty, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I left a little bit of a highlight in, in the eye there. So it's more or less, let me do it bigger so you can see it. So it's more or less, I do something like this and then I kind of fill out and then I do a little bit of kind of like that, you know, mm -hmm. nothing too elaborate. And it, when it's big like this, it doesn't look very good. But when it's little like this and you can't see the details, it actually works, I think. But to leave a space in the middle. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then so again, I'm going to try and see if I can give her another eye that's somewhat similar. Like that. Leave a little bit of white so she doesn't look dead. Anything alive that um, you paint, be it a fish or people or an animal, they've got to have a little sparkle in the eyes, otherwise they really look dead. So there she is, little eyes. And then she gets um, stripes on her scarf here, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So they go this way. And now we better make them a little bit wider so they match the stripes on the end of the scarf. So, so there's that. And one more. And then I'm gonna, yeah, so it's, it's just a little bit of darkness. And I'm gonna make the scarf a little, the green a little bit darker here and then in here if I can. You know, so again, it gets a little bit of dimension and a little highlight on the front side, yeah. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So there's a little scarf. Mm -hmm. And then you paint the shamrocks. And that's, you know, also just, it's just filling them out with the green. There's nothing to it. Just time. I'm just gonna do one for you. And you can choose whatever green. Now I'm choosing the green I happen to have in my, my palette here. That'll work. And there's the shamrock, one shamrock down, and four more to go. And that kind of, you know, gives her a nice little um, decor on her apron, makes it cute. And one other thing I can show you that is very easy now is we could go in and then I, I think I need to darken her waistband here a little bit. Or, or her, yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah waistband. Um, and I darken it at the two sides and then I pull the color out. Just to give it a little bit more dimension. There. So the only thing we really have left to do is put her little braids in. So I'm gonna let you do all those little parts I showed you the face and um, the scarf and the socks and all that stuff. And then we're just gonna do her braids and then her little bows. So we're going to put the finishing touch on this little gal here. And so what we are missing, what she's missing is her braids and her little bows in her braids. So we'll get that in and if somebody will grab the gal I have up here, I can kind of show you. I did finish braids on this gal here. Um, and uh, we just want to give that feeling of braids. And what we want to think about is dark pushes down, light brings forward. And so when you have those braids, you know, it's it's tucked under. So wherever it's tucked under, it'll be darker. 
And then where it's the fattest, you know, part of the little part of the braid, it's gonna be lighter, so you like there. Mm -hmm. And then you can see how it tucks under there, tucks under there, tucks under in there. And so if you just put a little bit of dark on there, it's gonna start looking like a braid. So the colors we're going to use um, are transparent yellow, quinacridone red, and burnt sienna. And then I think I want a little bit of um, cobalt blue when I need to darken a little bit. I don't need to go to so dark that I take the French ultramarine blue. Remember, that's what we took to create the buckles and the shoes, the buckle on her head and the shoes. And so I'm gonna get a little bit of, whoops, oh God, that's uh, of the um, French ultramarine blue out here. I have burnt sienna, so burnt sienna is, you know, an earth tone, and it works really well with um, French ultramarine blue and with um, cobalt to create grays and browns and uh, if you use French ultramarine blue, you can get black like we did here. All right, so I'm gonna take her braid kind of one, one section at a time, and I'm gonna put a little bit of water on, and I'm putting on the water, and I'm later I'm gonna put the paint on in the direction of the hairs. So if you have ever braided your own hair or maybe your daughters or your granddaughters you'll know kind of how it goes so now i'll put just a little bit of water on this big fat section here i don't know if you can see it yeah. mm -hmm. and i didn't you know but i it's not gonna it doesn't cover the whole thing because the whole idea is we want to have like strands so i'm going to take some of my yellow here and then i'm going to take a little bit of the red and put it in kind of orangey and maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna over here. So there I have some, because this gal, she has like, you know, I mean, she's Irish for goodness sake. It's, she has to have red hair, right? I mean, reddish hair anyway. So I'm gonna put some of that on. And I'm just gonna put a bit on like that. Can you see how I'm putting it on like in the direction of her braids? And now I'm not gonna bother cleaning out my brush, but I'm putting a little bit of the uh, straight burnt sienna on. And now before straight these burnt straight burnt, burnt sienna, before it's things burnt. dry, I want to get some of that on. And then it melts into that orangey color I put on and it already helps give it some uh, form. And then I, and yeah. And uh, I'm gonna put, now I clean my brush because now I'm out here at the edge of it. And that's gonna catch a little bit of light right there because it's the, the side that's closest to the light. And I'm gonna hold it up and then in a bit. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of that burnt shinner on here. And then a little bit more up here and it's gonna be darker down there. Can you see how I did that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's already getting a little bit of shape by doing that and letting mm -hmm. the colors, I don't, want it to, I don't want it to look striped. So that's why I like the colors to melt into each other a little bit. And now I'm gonna clean my brush and I might just go in and with a clean, damp, thirsty brush, I can go in and maybe lift out a little bit. Oh. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just like there on the fat part of her mm -hmm. little braid. And now, yeah, highlights. And now I'm gonna just dip the tip into that burnt sienna and I'm gonna go in and it's still a little damp so I get a little bit of texture. And now I'm gonna dip into a little bit of the cobalt blue and then into the burnt sienna so I get like a cooler, darker brown. And before it dries, I'm gonna dab in a little bit down here where it tucks under and maybe a, a few little places up here and I can also go in. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Can you see how that gives yeah. it? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it has some shape, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how I do those braids. So now I can't do the, the, the section that's right next to it because this is wet. And if I did this one here, it would flow together and I want them separated.
because they are, you know, two different strands that are overlapping each other. So I can go down and maybe I can do, um, I can do this little one, for instance. So that one's a little bit away from the light. I'm gonna put a little bit, but not much, a little bit of water on right on the fat part, just a little bit. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit I put on there. It has a little bit of color, so hopefully you can see it. All right, so I'm gonna go in here to that orangey color first. So you start with the lighter ones. Put a little bit of that on. So I just put that on like that. That way I can also see, you know, how much water I have on. Maybe I have a little bit too much. I'm gonna soak some of it off. And now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the burnt shenna and put a little bit right up there what is coming out from under that other part that goes over it. So it's gonna be darker there. So I know I can put a little darkness in there and then it's gonna just kind of flow into that light I put on. And I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness oh. right here. And then maybe a couple of little strands like that. Can you see already? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It starts looking like yeah. a braid. And I'll, now I'm just dipping the t just a little bit of the tip into a little bit of that cobalt blue to just darken while it's still damp here, a little bit more right here where it tucks under. And put a little bit more like that, but that's good enough. And I can go up maybe still and just darken a little bit there, darken a little bit here, put a couple of lines in from underneath the hat. I mean, and you don't, I mean, you can fuddle, uh, fiddle as much or as little with it as you want. But now I have those two. And um, let's go over on the other side and then I'll do one more time on this big one. There's a big one. So we'll do some water and we're kind of going in the direction of that hair strand like that. Mm -hmm. Then we start with the lightest color, that's that orangey I made out of the um, transparent yellow and quinacridone red and maybe a little bit of the, uh, of the uh, burnt shenna. So I'm just putting a little bit of those lightest lights in, just like that. I'm not even bothering cleaning up my brush. I'm gonna go in and get a little bit of that burnt shenna on and I'm gonna go in and put some of that on. And I'm just thinking where, wherever the hair is tucking under or away from the light, which is on this side here, I'm kind of running that in. And then a couple of like little strands to kind of show that. Can you see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going from up here, going down a little bit, and then down here. And now I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I wanna give her a little bit more Sass, so I'm going to put a little bit of the red on so it's a little brighter. You see that? So here, and then just a couple of strands like that. And a little bit of that lighter color again, there. And now I'm going to go in without rinsing out my brush, so I have that reddish orangey color on, and then I put a little bit of the uh, cobalt on, and that's going to give me that little bit of darker, dark brownish color. Can you see that? And I'm just going to go in and do a couple like this, clean it up a little bit. And there's that. We can always tweak it a little bit later if we need to. Darker up here, where it comes out from under and then go in that direction. Just as long as you go in the direction of the hair, you cannot go too wrong on it. I wanna strengthen it a little bit because I'm looking at that one over there. You know, it has to- Sort of match. To match <laughs> somewhat. Or else she went to a bad hairdresser. Yes, exactly, we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. Blue and purple and yeah, everything else. Yeah, right. Orange. So I think this is good enough. I don't wanna to mess too much with it. So there was one strand. And again, on this one here, I am feeling that I should probably just lift out a little bit of a highlight right there. And I can go back in with a little bit more like this. Yeah. 
just want to give her a little bit of a highlight. Darken a little bit more here and a little bit more here. I think that's good. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to do all the sections. Um, just do them where they're not touching each other yeah. first and then let it dry. Exactly, then dry. Uh, so the main thing is dark there where it tucks under and wherever it's kind of like the fattest and it kind of sticks out, you want to, you can lift out a little bit. That's where you kind of want the lightest part. <clears throat> I want to just lift it a little bit like that. And we can go in afterwards, once everything's dry, we can go in and do a little bit more, you know, uh, marking stripings on it if we feel we need it. But that's all it is. That's cute. <laughs> One little section at a time. Remember, dark pushes back. That's where it tucks under, a little bit darker, and light brings forward on the fatter parts. So I've sped this part of the video up for you because I am just uh, painting in all the different little sections of her braids on both sides using the colors I showed in the demo for the class. Um, I have the quinacridone red with transparent yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna as my lightest uh, color. And then I used a uh, straight burnt sienna and then some burnt sienna that's toned down and made a darker color with the cobalt blue. And I'm just following the principle of light brings forward and dark pushes back. And I'm applying the color with um, the, the hair strands in mind. So I'm using the directional strokes that I uh, demoed earlier. So I hope you can follow along. She's so <laughs> I'm just gonna paint the bottom of, uh, you know, uh, underneath the bow of her hair. And there, I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow on my brush so you can see. And then I'm gonna make it into hopefully those ends on her hair. Just so you can see, and goes like this. Wet on dry. I, I'm doing this wet on dry, yeah. Of course, it's such a small little area, and I think I want to do it like this. It goes a little bit in between, uh, in behind her thumb. And uh, now I'm going to go in okay? with a little yeah. bit of the burnt sienna. And again, it'll be a little darker right there where it comes out. Oh, there. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a little darker right here where it comes out underneath the bow. And then it'll be a little darker back here. And it'll be a little darker here and a little darker underneath. And now it's a little wet. Can you see how everything's flowing together? Mm -hmm. That's okay. I just got to give it a little change. So it's, it's the same principle here. Only now it's just like those ends that are hanging out. So I'm putting a little bit of that burnt sienna now underneath here and on the back side underneath here and then maybe a little bit in here. A little bit in there. So I'm just giving her, leaving a few of those highlights and now I need to go in with darker. So put a little bit of that, burnt, uh, that um, cobalt blue in burnt shenna and maybe a little bit of the red. And I have it really, 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 really dry. Can you see how dry it is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, don't, it doesn't even move on the palette here. That's how dry I want it. So it's still a little wet on the paper here, so it's still gonna flow out a little bit, but I don't want it to flow out too much. Now I wanna have a little bit more control. So I wanna get a few of those little lines in that kind of shows the direction. It's kind of like, you know, it's like those ends that are sticking out there the bottom like that a little bit darker there so you just want to get a little bit of texture on it and I'm going to put a little bit more of that reddish orange on give her the right color just dab that in and a little bit more maybe of the dark and then we're going to call it a day so I'm putting it in wherever it's turning away from the light. 
and up underneath where it comes out from that bow, it'll be darker, right? So can you see just by having a little bit of highlights and a little bit of dark and, and with a little tiny bit of directional stroke to it, it looks like those little curls. A little bit more right there. And again, don't get too obsessed with it. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> okay, so that's good enough. There. I think I wanna have a little bit of a highlight right here. So I can lift that out there. And then a little line. And now I'm really honestly gotta stop. There. What about the bow? Does it, it has a white spot in the middle. Oh no, it's pale yellow, isn't it? So this is a yellow bow, and I'm going to show you how I do the bow. So I take a little bit of yellow, just a transparent yellow on my brush, and I'm just going to do it on on um, the dry paper because that's a very little area, right? So I'm just going to paint it yellow like this whole thing yellow very light pale yellow so now there's a little bit of pigment and water on and then i'm going to take a little bit of that orangey color that i had on my palette and i'm going to put a little bit around the knot in the middle because that knot is going to stick out right like that can you see now how it's sticking out now because i put a little bit of that orange around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i'm going to put a little bit of that orange on the outer edge of the bow here here and i'm doing like little lines in like that now i'm going to rinse out my brush dab it and then i'm going to soften those edges of the orange in between here And I can darken a little bit around the bow, uh, the knot. Can you see how the knot's kind of coming out more because mm -hmm. I'm putting a little bit of a darker orangey color behind? And again, rinse it out. And I'm just gonna do like this, just pull it in. And then I think I'm gonna just try and lift out a little bit of highlight right there to kind of, you know, make it a little fuller. Yeah. But can you see that? Mm -hmm. That's good mm -hmm. enough, I think. A couple more little lines here. There's some little folds. That's good enough. And there's a little bow. One or two more little things I want to do. Um, the way I always finish off a painting is um, I go around and kind of fix there's there'll always be some edges that needs fixing. Can you see here? Mm -hmm. Had a little bit of white yeah. sparkle there. It doesn't belong there. So I just go in with a damp brush and just kind of very gently kind of move the pigment around a little bit so I get rid of it. Can you see I have a white spot up here too? Mm -hmm. That doesn't really belong either. And I don't even need to take any color on my brush. I just need to have a damp brush, not wet. It's just damp, just damp enough that it can move a little bit of pigment. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just so you can kind of get rid of some of those little sparkles that are in the wrong spot. That's, and that is only if you really, it really bothers you. Otherwise you don't have to do it. And you can also do, if I can grab my girl again, or the, yeah. Okay. So you can also see here, I, the hat is like this. And here I put a little bit of shadow on here to kind of say that it's like the crown of the hat. And so we can do that. And that would just be my transparent yellow in my Antwerp blue colors we've used for her outfit. And then we can go in and it's on dry, but you could have done it on wet. You can find a brush I like here. Um, give it a little bit of shape. So here maybe. It's too wet. So a little shape to the hat. And like this. So you can see a little bit, you know, 
kind of got a little dent in it up there. And there. Here I'm doing my head a little bit different, but that's okay. It's my head. I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a little darker right here. Just like that. If you want, this is all, you know, depends on how obsessed you want to be with this and what you like, mostly. I'll give her a little, kind of like that shape, so. Is that a thirsty brush? That Pardon me? Is that a thirsty brush you just used? No, it? it's a damp brush so that I can just loosen, yeah. uh, loose the edges, so. Thirsty brush picks up pigment. I don't want to pick it up. I just want to. Um, I just want to blend it. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Okay. I think this is good enough. And then there was one other thing, one other little tiny tiny detail that I kind of like to do. So I'm going to mix myself a really dark green. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of the burnt sienna in also. And it's very dry. Can you see that? Super dry. And I just have the pigment on the tip of my brush. Mm -hmm. And there's, you can see a tiny bit of the back inside of her hat. So, just so it sits on her head more. This is really the nitty gritty stuff you don't have to do it if it doesn't you know if you don't want to there you can see a little bit of the back side of her hat yeah mm -hmm. and then there's other little sparkles in here that i want to get rid of since i have the green on here and this is just all for the perfectionists so <laughs> don't have to do it don't have to do it oh and there was one other thing that yeah. i thought <laughs> <laughs> talking about perfectionists that waist right oh the Should waist yeah, i had forgotten about the waist so yes so that waistband we could possibly give it a little bit more so that's like cobalt blue gray down that we use for that not too dark so we can kind of give her a little bit more of a waist with darkening that waistband a little bit more and see i do it from the sides put it in pull it in like that and then i'm going to rinse out my brush dab dab and then before it dries i'm just going to pull it out so if you, you thought after you did it it's too dark then you dab it off <laughs> that's, that's it. I like that. I can do that. <laughs> that you can do. <laughs> so, so I I think it was fine. So I'm gonna and so it's from the sides because you know she has a little bit of a tummy, doesn't she? Mm. I think she does. <laughs> um, so it'll be lighter as it comes forward here out into the light. Her tummy sticks out a little bit. But can you see when you do it a little bit darker in that it gives her a little cinches her a little bit more yeah. on the waist. So that's, you know, all optional. And then there was one other thing that I thought would probably make her a little bit better. So I mixed myself from, you know, extremely pale mixes of a burnt sienna with a little bit of cobalt blue in a skin color again, because I really do feel, I did put her eyes on, so I gotta be careful I don't smudge that black there of course that will smudge if we let it so i i'm giving her a little bit of a darker face around her nose and underneath her nose especially because you know that big old nose that's got to cast a shadow don't you think <laughs> <laughs> i think so. can you see how i'm just it's barely anything but i am darkening her skin color a little bit mm -hmm. And then I had mixed myself already kind of a, a blush color here while it's still damp. I could give her a little bit more blush on her little cheeks. And that makes her nose stick out a little bit more. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And that is again, just nitty gritty stuff that you do not have to do. And if we want to do her nose, just a hint 
red as we can. Again, that's just a little bit of the red. And then, oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's definitely looked into the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, she's supposed to be cute, right? So we can exaggerate these things a little bit. I think that makes her cuter with a red nose. <laughs> and now I'm gonna, oh, one more thing. Now I'm gonna leave her alone, almost. Well, I'm just gonna use whatever I have on the palette here. So a cobalt blue with a little bit of the burnt sienna. Nice gray blue color, shadow. Remember I said I was gonna cast a shadow. I mean, you can totally leave her like this because again, this is not like a, I mean, I mean she's, she's, but she is floating a little bit when they're just standing like that. So since we put the arrow up here and the lights on her are you know coming from that side, that means that the shadow would come from down here. And I do like to put a little bit of water actually on first. Um, so I pick up here from the tip of her shoe mm. and it goes up there and it just follows her feet and it does go up there and then kind of off the page. Mm. So I put water on like that and now I'm just going to put the pigment in. And it helps to have that water. Of course, it already guides the pigment where we want it to go. So there's that. Just make sure it. So, and then I'm gonna put a little bit more water on. I don't want the shadow to blend be too, too. And then blend it out. Cool. Just that way she's kind of grounded. Can you see? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't like to have it too hard of a line there, so I'm just gonna kind of take that away. Just, you know, still gonna have some shadow there, but like that. Nice. And that way she's, she's with, declare her done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, even though it was long. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below and uh, also hit the little bell. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. So uh, happy St. Patty's Day to everybody.